friends to lay hands on his shoulder, that'd be great. The Lord says to you tonight, there were things academically that you struggled with. In this next season, you won't struggle with it anymore. Because it's like the light is going to turn on. Because, son, you said it's hard. I don't know if I can do it. And the reason I had you put out your hands is God putting those things in front of you. Not so you could drop it and say, I can't do it, it's too difficult. Because remember what God says, is there anything too difficult for me? Do you know that the me that said that lives inside of you? And you need to access that word right now. Because in this season, there's going to be things that you're going to be exposed to that you've never done before. And he says, man of God, don't walk away from the challenge. Step up to the plate. Because I'm counting on you. Because you're not stepping up the plate just for your, your, your fellow classmates or your youth group. You're stepping up the plate for me. I'm calling you off the bench. You're my pinch hitter. And I don't believe you can strike out. Oh, but what, but God, look, but what happened last year? The year before, two years ago, three years ago. I don't care. I forgot that. This is a new day. This is a new hour. And it doesn't matter how hard they throw the ball. Or how curly or twisted things are. You're going to hit it, son. Hear the word of the Lord. The things you never did before, you're going to swing at. The things that you never saw before, you're going to see clearly. Hear the word of the Lord tonight. Lift your hands right now. Father, from the top of his head to the soles of his feet, touch him right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There it is. There it is. God touching you right now. Oh, come on, church. Come on, son. Oh, I'm 
sinus problem. And a severe allergy. In fact, sometimes you have to take a breathalyzer to get your breath. The Lord wants to heal you. Where are you? Let me see your hand. So you man, yes, you sir. right now in Jesus' name. Here comes the oil. Here comes the wine. Here comes the oil. Here comes the wine. It's touching you right now. Never to return in Jesus' name. Yes, I want more of your help. Yeah, I want more of the wine. Yeah, I want more of the glory. Yeah, I want more of the fire. Oh, yes, I want more of the glory. Make it your prayer. Yeah, I want more of the wine. Oh, I want more of the glory. Yeah, I want more of the fire. Yes, release us. The oil and the wine. Don't release it. What a beautiful thing. The other way. I believe, friend, it's in Second Samuel, and you know the story, the floating axe head. I see God seeking and hearing the desires of your family's heart. That was a school of the prophets. That was a, a, a place of training. And they realized that where they were at was not big enough for the anointing. That was not big enough for where, all, that where they all were at. And so they asked the man of God if they could go and enlarge and build. And God says, you have asked for an enlargement. You have asked for more. And I'm not just talking about the building, but for the anointing and for the understanding. You've asked for the inheritance, as Meliana was talking about, for your children and your children's children. And it says that he, they were given permission. They were given permission to go out and do the work. And God says, you're not afraid of the work. In fact, there's times where you've done the work alone. You've done the work when there weren't laborers there. But you've been faithful and you've continued to do it. But there's been accidents that have happened along the way. There's been hurts. There's been wounds. There have been people that have had to stop as that axe head fell in the water. What the Lord is saying right here tonight is that that axe head is going to come. That those tools are going to come back. Those people are going to come back. Those ministries are going to come back. Those relationships are going to come back. But he says it's not going to be because you pray for it to come back. And it's not going to be because you believe for it to come back. Because the anointing of God is on you. It's going to cause it to come back. The power of God, the anointing of God, it's not going to be by you making phone calls, you doing this. God is going to bring people back because of your heart. 
And the great thing is all these miracles you've heard about and you've seen and you've desired to happen. When the prophet said, you pick it up, that connected him to the miracles. You're going to see miracles begin to take place in your ministry. You're going to begin to see the signs and wonders take place in your ministry. You're going to see the blind eyes open. You're going to see wheelchairs stacked up along the side of the church. You're going to see people come in with deliverance. You're not just going to hear about miracles, read about miracles, but you're going to actually touch and you're going to be used by God to do these miracles. You're going to, your whole family, your children are going to lay hands on other children and there's going to be miracles that take place. You're going to lay your hands on other people about your same age or maybe even a little bit older and you're going to have faith. What's, it, what's your name? Bubba? Bubba. Come on, Bubba. Come on, the devil can't stand against a Bubba. Huh? Come on, Bubba. You're going to lay hands on people. You're going to lay hands even on people that aren't kids, on, on big people. And because the anointing of God that's going to come through your family, you're going to see signs and wonders. You're going to put your hand into the water. And you're going to pick up the axe head. And you're going to connect to the miracles. You're not too young. You're not too little. You have seen the demonstration. You've heard Daddy talk about the power of God. You've heard Mommy read to you the miracles of God's Word. God says you're going to be a part of those miracles. And you're going to Walk in those miracles. Hallelujah. Bubba, come on, man. Come on. <laughs> Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I pray specifically for this young warrior, man. Lord, this general to be in the army of God. This young man that is going to rise up and is going to not just watch miracles, not just going to sit back and spectate to these things, God, but he is going to put his hand to the plow. He is going to put his faith to the work. He's going to pay the extra cost, God, and he is going to see the signs and wonders. And I speak a prophetic anointing, an apostolic anointing, in his life, God. One, Lord, that will totally change the school system, totally change the school board, totally change the leaders in his community because how could such power come from such a young man? How could there be such authority and such change from such a child? God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Oh, the wisdom. As Jesus, Bubba, as Jesus had the Pharisees confounded when he was just a lad. He confused them with the knowledge that he had. You're going to confuse adults. You're, the knowledge that God is going to download into you and put into you is going to confound the wisdom of adults. Hallelujah. Can you put your hand on your mom's heart? What's your name? Hannah. Hannah. Wow. No, Hannah. You've really helped your mom. And the Lord shows me that when, when adults have signed up for things and dropped the ball, you've had plans for the day. You pushed your plans aside to step in to do the role when somebody didn't do what they were supposed to. Because your mom asked. And you did things you didn't want to do, but you did them because you loved her. Because you saw how hard she worked. Saw how hard she worked for so your dad could do ministry. And how the things that she did behind the scenes that wasn't public. You love your dad, you love your, his ministry. But your heart burns for your mom. And God says to you, God says to you, Hannah, the light in that church is getting brighter because of your life. And I can tell you this right now. You're the kind of woman that doesn't tolerate silly stuff. And the devil's afraid of you. And so are people that are living in compromise. God says to you, Hannah, you've watched your mom serve kids, other kids, not just these kids, but other kids. And you've seen parents be cruel who call themselves believers. 
And you know what? The Lord showed me. You never got a bad taste in your mouth. You kept serving. And that servant's heart, God says, is going to get rewarded because, see, there'll be a day when you go to college, God's going to pay the bill. Come on. God's going to pay the bill. Because of what you've shown into your parents. And God's hand is on your life. Yes. With your hands right now. Lord, from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. Meliana, come over here and lay your hands on her little heart. And Lord, I thank you for her life. I thank you for what you're doing right now. And I thank you for that passion. Yes. It may not be overly expressive because it is the embers of God living on the inside of her heart. It continues to burn brighter and hotter and hotter. And the Lord says those embers are going to be coming out of your mouth. They're going to hit that cold, stale religion. It's going to light people on fire. God's going to use your lips to light people on fire. Lord, I thank you for arriving. Increase the revelation. Increase the anointing in Jesus' name. Go ahead, son. Love and full of God. Over. 